Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. In this video, I'll go through the stages of exploration that led me to this character illustration. When you have any idea in your mind, put it down into paper with little thumbnails. No detail, no pretty drawings, just a fast blocking of the main elements in your scene. Even written notes are helpful. Pour down whatever ideas you have in your mind. Having a small visual lets us start looking for references. I'll use sources like Pinterest, Instagram and stock photography sites for general ideas. My main references are usually those that I fabricate tailored to the idea that I'm chasing, like these photos that I took from a nearby river, or this character sculpting that I made in Nomad Sculpt. Sometimes the references will enrich that original idea you put on paper, but the essence remains. Sometimes the references will influence so much that original idea that it will look very different. I gather and organize my images in a software called PureRef. This software lets me create boards of images without messing with their resolution. I can do basic operations like scale, rotate and even turn into black and white. Make sure you gather references for every aspect of your image. For instance, an object like a Swiss knife that I'm familiar with looks nothing like it in my original drawings, so I gotta learn how to draw it. The more problems you solve beforehand, the better you will do later. Using this as a base, I'll create several digital thumbnails with the actual proportions the final illustration will have. The first sketch is focused on the 2D design of my composition. I'm only using contrast of size, value, shapes and position. This is a story of an overpowered hunter and its doom prey. The hunter is hidden, lurking in the shadows, so I'll use less contrast against the background so they merge. These dark values will occupy most of the image, overpowering the lighter ones. The prey is very visible and vulnerable in the constricted lighter area. It is also the smallest and most isolated element in the scene. Its surroundings are sharp shapes that echo the fangs in the hunter's design. In contrast, the hunter's silhouette merges in the background. Only a couple elements pop. I want you to see first the anglerfish and the creature inside it is slightly concealed. So the elements with the highest value in this area belong to the anglerfish. The design of the hunter is round and angular. I want the prey to feel disconnected. His design is more squarish and thin. I did not plan all of these choices in my head beforehand. I discovered them as I'm sketching. Note that even though I'm working with more detail than before, this still looks very blocky and it's mostly shapes, the silhouettes of the main elements in my scene. I am mostly happy with this thumbnail, but I'll create a duplicate and tweak a few things. I don't like that compositionally both characters are in the same line, and after getting a little feedback I realized that the scene could be slightly more interesting, adding anticipation, instead of having a capture fish doing the moment right before, when danger is lurking but not everything is lost. With this fixed thumbnail I'll make now a line sketch. Here is where having a 3D model comes very handy, because it is a great reference that I can put in the desired camera angle. Don't feel like you need to learn 3D sculpting, you can do this with clay. When I went scouting for reference, I took some time to sketch the grass that I wanted in my shot, and even though my sketches were not very impressive, this gave me the experience to incorporate this element in my illustration. Note that I am selective on where my sketch is descriptive and where it is vague. I am starting to plan which areas of my painting will be more busy against the areas of visual rest. I don't want to overwork an area like the grass over here and then struggle because it's stealing attention from my story. Before I carry on, I want to thank our dear patrons whose support allow us to bring new videos every week. Learn about our rewards and join us in patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Back to the video. Now that I have line work, I can do a light and shadow study, using more values than what I did before. These sort of studies are fun to do with charcoal or graphite. I chose digital so I can share with you the time lapse. This can be bigger than the original thumbnails to have more room to work, but it's still good to keep it kind of small so you don't get distracted with too much detail. The key is to add values little by little and reduce the opacity of the line work until you can completely turn it off and your image reads. 
I am even experimenting with the kind of brushwork that I could get away with the final image. This whole time I have been keeping in mind my original thumbnail. I gotta keep in check the values, especially on this dark stone, where I have very specific highlights. If I apply a blur and zoom out, this image should look very similar to the original thumbnail I made. Otherwise you could be changing unintentionally the way the image reads. Now that I have solved most of the painting, what is left is color, for which I will go back to the small thumbnails and broad brush strokes. I don't need to work defining shapes correctly, because I already did in the past sketches. I am keeping it focused on the objective of this particular study. This is why movie color scripts tend to be in such a brush style. The first color exploration is based on the photo references I took. Once that I have the basic idea, I'll make extra layers and duplicates and play around with blending modes, filters like gradient maps, or even sepia tintings. You don't have to repaint the whole thing, just mess around with color correction tools. I have a black layer on top set to the color blending mode. This is gonna help me check my values every once in a while, to make sure that I'm not going too far away from the original intention. Sure, you might decide something looks better than the original thumbnail, but make that into a decision, a happy accident you decided to keep, instead of a mistake that you never noticed. Color gives me another story element that I can play with. Looking at these thumbnails, I discovered that I can use the color blue as the world of the prey, and as you get into the hunter's world, we step into a warmer zone. Maybe the area around my hunter can be more vibrant and saturated, while the prey one is more neutral. The bait is an intrusion of the hunter in the prey's world, so I use warm tones. I can easily create a new thumbnail, taking the best parts of these others and making a new one, like a Frankenstein of them all. With these studies, I feel ready to start the actual painting. Now it's a matter of repeating what I already did. Of course, new challenges will come up. It's your choice whether you want to solve these new battles as you're doing the final illustration or by doing separate studies. I'll make a separate video describing in detail the workflow for this illustration. For now, I will leave you with an analogy of cake. If you want to eat a whole cake, you have to slice it and divide each slice into spoonfuls. Trying to eat the whole cake in one go will be messy and with little chances of success. Divide your cake, I mean your illustration, into slices and spoonfuls. Little by little, you will get to the end of that cake. That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.